Uh, hi everybody, I'm Matt. Uh, I am the lead engineering instructor for the Global Part-Time Remote Immersive, Petrie for short. Um, and I will be moderating today, asking questions, interacting with the panelists and so forth and so on. Uh, I did not go, I did go through the program, it was a few years ago. I did not have a baby with me in tow at the time, but I have become one, uh, not a baby, a parent now. Um, so my son is six months old as of two days ago, uh, born a month early and oh my goodness, we were just all talking about all the things I never want to happen to him. I never want anyone to be mean to him. I never want anyone to hurt him or him to get hurt. He's never going to get sick and he's always going to be happy. That Those are my goals for him. Uh, pretty easy to, to achieve, I think. Uh, maybe you all with more experience can let me know. Uh, but that's my story. Uh, I'm actually phoning in here from Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, I've been all up and down the East Coast. Most recently, I lived in LA for about eight years before my wife and I decided to move out here and start a family, which we did. Um, thanks to the program. Uh, I was just telling someone else in a meeting before this that Coats with hands down changed my life. I don't know how people do it with kids in tow. These folks will tell you about that. But it was definitely an experience I wouldn't trade for the world because it it turned every, it, the reason I have a family now is because of Code Smith and the opportunities afforded me afterwards. Uh, so that's me. And I guess, uh, Sam, Sam M, take it away. Sure. Um, hi, my name is Sam Mills. Um, I just graduated in June from Petrie, the part-time program. Um, I have three kids. I have currently, they are two, four, and six. I feel like that's like a quiz. Um, and so when I went through the program, they were one, three, and five. So, um, and I'm from, I live in Maryland. I'm like an hour outside of DC. When she doesn't live in North Carolina, that's an inside joke between us. I always told her she lived in North Carolina when she went to the program, regardless of where she actually was. Uh, Alex. Yeah. Um, my name's Alex McPhail. Something weird just popped up here. Um, I uh, am in Galveston, Texas, so way down here on the third coast. Um, I graduated from the full-time West Coast program in November, so it was uh, week three 53. Um, and now I work for an avionics company that builds flight software for fixed-wing drones. Um, and my daughter was two, she turned three while I was in the program. So Matt, it's bad news. My daughter started the program never having been sad and then she turned three and that's when it happens. <laughs> um, uh, well, I'm excited to uh, answer questions and talk about my experience in the program. Thanks so much, Alex. I am going to then embrace the next two and a half years while I have them. Also, I didn't know you were in Galveston. I uh, I went to grad school in Houston, so right down the corner, right down the street-ish, relatively speaking. Cool. Uh, Samantha. Hi, everyone. My name is Samantha. I live in Baltimore, Maryland. I don't know how there's such an overrepresentation of Marylanders here today, but that's exciting. Um, I finished I graduated the weekly program in January time is hard to remember of this past year um, and then I got hired in March at S&P Global I'm a front end engineer there um, I had a baby while I well I had the baby before and I had a baby while I was in the program I, I did the full-time immersive um, and he was mm, he was seven months when I started and 10 months when I when I graduated. So he was, he was just a little guy. Um, and now he's a big guy and you probably saw him on the camera and I'm sure he'll be back. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to answer any questions and help anybody out with, give any, any kind of tips. Oh my goodness. With a six month old myself, I can imagine starting the program, the full-time program with a seven month old. I'm sure those tips are going to be all the rage. Um, all right. So let's get to our first question then. Um, what were you doing before CodeSmith? What made you decide to get into software engineering and take the immersive? Uh, and we'll start with Alex. Yeah, um, nothing technical at all. I was a, uh, my wife and I owned um, an organic flower farm for a decade before I found CodeSmith. Um, 
that was a fun project in our 20s. And then we got into our 30s and it got less and less fun. And so we're looking for a shift and an out. Um, and we had a kid. And so um, it was just time for a change. I um, sort of had some vague memories of taking computer science classes in my undergrad in 2004 and uh, um, thought it might be fun. And I started in on CSX and stuff like that and just caught the bug. So that's what drove me to it. Um, my wife has a really nice career here. So uh, I also was really attracted to the idea of remote work because I was not thrilled about trying to find a job in Galveston that was really specific. So um, that's what drew me to Codesmith. Would you say that uh, your daughter, right, uh, was a primary driver to change careers? In a lot of ways. I mean, um, you know, thinking about the future uh, going forward and, you know, expenses. Being a farmer was a lot of fun, but, um, you know, you don't make any money doing it. So uh, it was nice to have a, uh, a new uh, source of income. And... Uh, um, yeah, I, I would say it was the combination of a daughter, uh, ha having a kid and um, and getting a little older and having a tired back, you know, and a tired brain that really led me to it. Yeah, it was very much the same for me. Uh, uh, the the future family that I wanted is what drove me to shift. So I, I came with a non-coding background too, so totally understand. Um, Samantha, what were you doing before Codesmith and what made you decide to get into software engineering and take the immersive? Sure. Um, so before Codesmith, I was a teacher. I taught in LAUSD in Los Angeles for 10 years and one year here in Baltimore. Um, and the thing that really um, sealed the deal for me was, I, and I loved, I loved teaching and I would do it forever if it was, um, if it was a career that I could make, uh, you know, enough money to support my family. And so when I moved to Baltimore, took a huge pay cut um, they, they brought me in as a new teacher and I was like, no, I have like a lot of experience and I'm like, I like teaching and I'm good at it. And they're like, we don't care. So, um, took a huge pay cut and that wasn't really going to work for us. We, you know, I was pregnant. I, we had just bought a house and I was like, well, I got to figure something else out. So talked to some of my friends that were teachers at one point and they, I swear all switched to software engineering. They're like, you should do it too. It's so awesome. So I like did some Googling figured it out my my son loves elephants there's an elephant on the tv um distracting so um so i looked into it i was like okay great software engineering looks awesome i did a little coding in college too and remembered being very excited about it and then um to decide to go to codesmith i you know did my research found that it was the best one i had another friend that went through the program um and she was like it's it's awesome and i think that you should do it so um so I I took the plunge because of because of money and I'm and I'm glad I did. Yeah, it really is life changing. There's no doubt about that. Uh, Sam, did you have a, I think you had a similar experience? Yeah, I did. Um, I was also a teacher. I was a special ed teacher for ten years. Um, and you know, before we had kids, I was at my school from like seven a.m. to eight p.m. Like everything was done. Nothing was ever undone. Like there's just a lot of work that can go into it if you let it. Um, and then I had kids and couldn't do that anymore. And I felt like I was always sort of rushing, like stuffing food in their face in the morning so that I could get to school. And then I came home and it was like, all right, stuff food in your face again and go to bed. And there was never like, like that was kind of every day and it was not fun. I don't think for them either. Um, and so when I had my third baby, he was born over the summer. So that was my, I just sort of ended that school year and didn't go back. Um, I was very burnt out. I didn't want to go back, but we knew kind of going into it that like we, I couldn't just stay home sort of, you know, we couldn't be a one income house. Uh, my husband's also a teacher. Um, and so, you know, we knew going into it, like, I'm, I don't want to go back to teaching. I'd like to do something else. And I didn't know what that was at the time. Uh, my husband actually found the intro workshops, like the intro to JavaScript Codesmith workshops. And he was like, hey, do you think you'd be interested in this? And I went to one and I was like, oh, this is cool. Maybe I'll do the next thing. And I just kind of, it snowballed from there and I was interested and I do like it. So that's how I ended up here. 
Awesome. Yeah. And for, uh, for anyone who's not familiar, those workshops are free. There's intro to JavaScript. So if you come in with zero background in tech, uh, you have those available to you. And if you're curious about some of the harder concepts in JavaScript, there's JavaScript, the hard parts on Thursdays. Uh, and it's a great way to get a sense of the teaching style and the community that you're involved in when it comes to CodeSmith. So highly recommend those if you're curious, because it doesn't cost you anything but a few hours. And man, do I really resonate. Uh, not because I've ever had the jam food in my son's mouth. He's still on the bottle. But the remote work, on my breaks, I get to go inside and see him for five minutes, for 10 minutes. And oh my goodness, does it make all the difference in my day? I never thought that would have been seven months ago, if you would, would have told me I would have said that sentence right now, I would have never believed you, but oh my goodness, it, it absolutely does. Um, so next, uh, what were your biggest concerns with making this change? And what were you most excited about? Um, we'll, we'll start there and then I'll ask the next one has kind of a follow-up. Let's start with Samantha. So what was I most concerned about, right? Mm -hmm. Making a change? Um, so, you know, I just, it's scary to bet on yourself and to think like I can do something wild. Um, and there was no backup plan. So we're, we're a two income household and we have to be. Um, and so I talked to my husband and I was like, Hey, I know I've got like a super stable career and a pension, but hear me out. What if I threw that away? and became a software engineer. And he was like, but can you? And I was like, no, not yet. I got to go and spend $20,000 first. Then I can. And he's like, what's happening? So, you know, it's, it was super scary for both of us. Cause if, if I failed, if I didn't figure it out and get a job, then, you know, I wasn't just hurting myself. It wasn't me eating ramen. It would be me and my whole family. So, um, so it was, it's scary. You know, I, there was no, there's nowhere else to turn if things didn't work out for me. Um, and I definitely burned some bridges when I, when I quit my job. So it's like, all right, gotta, gotta make it. Um, but the thing that was, I was, you know, most excited about was this opportunity. Sam mentioned it to, you know, work a regular job where it's, you know, eight hours a day. And like, actually it's less, um, to work a regular job without stress as a teacher, you, you just stress all the time. And I, my boss the other day was like, I don't mean to stress you or anything. I'm like, you actually can't. So I used to be, I used to teach math. Like you can't stress me out. So like teaching, I mean, sorry, software engineering is like no stress, great hours. I work from home. So I get to see this little guy all the time. Like I was just excited to be able to, cause I'm a little older. So like start a new career and be able to like reinvent what work means for me because it, it used to mean everything I had 150%, but now it is I'm excited to go to work. It's exciting stuff, but I'm also excited to close my computer and um, and then go and do my family stuff and then also get paid enough money to be able to afford the things that I want and need. So that was what really made me excited and made me realize like, okay, I really have to, I have to bet on myself and try to do it. Yeah, it's remarkable. All the folks here are so driven to change their lives and many of them come in with that great motivator of, I gotta make this work. Uh, and I think it's one of the, the the primary reasons that folks are able to get through such an intense program. Um, so, so cool, thanks. Uh, Sam, uh, what were your biggest concerns making the change and what are you what were you most excited about? So I, when I went out on like, after I ended that school year and had my son, I technically went out on childcare leave and my county I taught in, I had three years, like you can take up to three years. So every year they go, Hey, are you coming back next school year? Yes or no. And I was terrified of having to say yes. Like I loved teaching, but I was very burnt out. It's like, you know, not with the kids, but just with like the other sort of crap that comes along with teaching. Um, and I really didn't want to go back. I was terrified of like, if this fails or if I fail or if this doesn't go well, like not only did I spend a lot of money, but now I'm doing a job that I don't love anymore and the impact on my family and like taking care of my kids. Um, so I was really, really scared. Uh, like Samantha said, like kind of betting on myself and like just taking this like leap, which was huge. Um, I was very excited about the potential sort of freedom that it offers in schedule, in paycheck, in like being there for my family, 
you know, seeing my kids going on field trips and not having to write sub plans, um, cause that's awful. So I was really excited about sort of the freedom in all of the areas. Cool. And so I guess this follow-up question, were there any timing considerations in regard to the age of your kids? Me first. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I went through the part-time program. Um, I have three kids. I am the childcare. Like that's why I, when I stayed home, we don't have another option. Uh, we were on one income, so we couldn't afford like to send them anywhere. Uh, we don't have family around. So the part-time program worked perfectly for us in that my kids go to bed at seven and then our class, I'm on the East coast. So it started at eight. Um, I don't think I could have done another program. Like it worked. I think I was really kind of fortunate that that's the setup that it was and that we had. So. Well, well, yeah. Samantha with a seven month old, how did you manage? Like what were there, what were the timing considerations there for you? <laughs> um, so I, so I live on the East coast also and did the West coast program. Um, so the reason I had, to, the reason I thought to do, sorry, the reason I thought to do the, um, the shorter immersive was because we, so we depended on my income so much. I was like, okay, what if I could just like cram as much in as possible, um, and get a job as quickly as possible. Yes, Poppy. Um, so that, so I had also considered the, the part-time, um, but we did, we couldn't, we couldn't afford the mortgage and all that on just one income. So I was like, I've got this much in saving, like I can, I can do it quickly. Um, and maybe, maybe part-time would have been better for me in terms of like learning or whatever, but for me, I couldn't, I just couldn't do it. Um, and then, you know, we started, so for me, I started at noon. So I had the mornings with the baby. Um, and then my husband really stepped up and throughout the day, but um, the reason I did, yeah. So the reason I did the West coast one was so that I could start later and be with him and he goes to bed at seven and then I worked for a few hours after that. So I felt like I wasn't missing out on as much. Um, but in terms of like his age and timing, um, I wanted, I knew that him being a toddler was going to be nuts. No! As you can tell. <laughs> um, and so I thought, you know, why don't I do it as quickly as possible? Cause he's like a little potato as a baby and, you know, I could sit him somewhere and he would sit there. Now that's like, that's a pipe dream. Um, so I knew when, if, while he was a baby, I knew it would be hard because I, you know, it's be, having a baby is physically draining and we all know. Um, but I knew that it would be easier to learn while he was that little potato rather than when he was a toddler. I, I dread the day Asher stops being a potato. I feel you, Jewel. And he hasn't started moving yet. Um, but that's a really great point because a lot of people who want to come to the part-time program, they talk about having more time in the material. But if you think about it in terms of time to market, time to job, you leave a lot of money on the table when you do that. So we really only recommend the part-time program for folks who can't do it any other way. It's for folks that really can't put pause on life. That's what the part-time program is for because it's just not quite as cost-effective if you take into account the six-figure salary waiting for you on the other end. Uh, cool. Alex, so what were your biggest concerns making the change and what were you most excited about? And then all three for you, were there any timing considerations giving the age of your kids, their child, daughter? Yeah, um, I will absolutely piggyback on but what both Samantha said. Uh, uh, I had all the same concerns. I was born with imposter syndrome, I think. So uh, I had imposter syndrome before the technical interview. So uh, um, definitely, you know, a big leap to take, uh, financially. Um, also I was, um, and I'm not alone in this, but I was the primary caregiver for, for my daughter as well. I was, you know, I had farmer hours, but I was self-employed. So I was with her most of the day. Um, and so that was a big concern and a big change for us, uh, as a family, uh, to think about. And that sort of, um, you know, going into the thinking about timing thing, we we waited until we felt comfortable with COVID and all of the stuff to send uh, her to preschool so that we would have some days freed up. Um, that was just what worked best for us. Um, we had some family help, but it's hard to ask 
a bunch of septuagenarians to watch a kid for, you know, 11 hours a day. So preschool is coming in pretty handy in that regard. Um, what I was most excited about, honestly, I mean, Samantha W nailed it. Being a software engineer is, it's vastly easier than being in Codesmith. Being in Codesmith is easier, at least for me, than studying for Codesmith. And all of it is easier than farming. So it's like, <laughs> it is so sweet to have a true nine to fiver. Uh, you know, I, I work in person too, which I was not expecting to to do that. But, um, you know, so I'm actually in an office, but I, I mean, I check out of there and I just cruise home. I don't think about it again at all. It's delightful. And uh, that sort of separation from uh, your your life being your work to rather your work being something you do in your life is uh a, was big for me i was ready for that, that change uh, i've spent most of my life like taking hobbies and turning them into careers and ruining them so this is nice to have that nice separation <laughs> um <clears throat> uh yeah i, I mean I, I the timing considerations was was largely i did a similar thing to samantha i did a uh the West Coast program, even though I'm a central time, so that I'd have mornings to be with my daughter. Uh, and then um, we made a similar decision that for our family, that the full-time program, three months of completely turning our lives upside down felt easier than nine months of sort of turning our lives upside down. So, um, but that's, you know, personal decision for everybody. I think whatever fits into your life is, is the right way to go. Absolutely, because just getting to the other side is the point. Uh, and that's actually a great sort of segue into what life was like during the immersive. So for anyone who's not familiar, the full-time program is three months, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 8 p.m., and then Saturdays, 9 a.m. to 4.30 p.m., and you do that 12 straight weeks, and then you're out. The part-time program is about nine months. It's uh, five to eight Pacific uh, yeah, five to eight Pacific, Monday through Thursday, and then Saturdays, nine to three Pacific. I stumbled over my own program. Um, the reason is because the full-time program, I said it's 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. There's one in virtually every time zone in the U. Well, I shouldn't say. I found out recently that there are seven time zones in the U.S. So I think I'm just referring to the contiguous U.S., right? There's only three there. There's one east, central, oh, I guess it's mountain and uh, Pacific, so there's not. <laughs> East Coast Central Time and uh, Pacific, 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. And of course, the part-time, like I said, uh, 20 hours a week, 5 to 8 Pacific, and then 9 to 3 on Saturdays. So uh, Alex and Samantha, you did the full-time programs, and then Sam, you did the uh, part-time immersive. So I guess let's start with the full-timers. Alex, what did a typical day look like for, for you? Uh, and how did that work balancing parenthood? Yeah. Um, so the good thing is, so it's crazy. I mean, it's not, it's, it's wildly intense and you're just like, you know, parked in front of your computer for extremely long hours. But what I was sort of surprised to find, I was prepared, you know, for that to be the case for the entire time. What I found really surprising and <laughs> relieving was that, it's like the first five weeks that are that crazy, crazy intense schedule. And then you get past that, that first five weeks is like lecture, unit, lecture, pair programming, lecture, pair programming, lecture, pair programming, and, and like on repeat. And you're just like learning new concepts constantly. And it's like sitting in a wind tunnel for five weeks. And then at the end of it, you're like, whoa, I know programming now. And uh, then you go into the project phase and that, chills out significantly it's still really long hours but you can stand up and walk away for a few minutes I mean it, you're kind of negotiating the time with your group that you're working with and and that th that kind of thing so it becomes much more um open feeling uh, there are still like obligations during the day and like times that you have to be in certain places but after that first five weeks it it opens up a lot um so that was a huge relief for me because I think it, I mean I'm probably by design I think if that first five week schedule went on the entire time you would go insane so well uh, how about you for, uh, for you Samantha 
definitely agree with everything Alex said. Um, the first couple of weeks were the toughest. And I what is it? Like the third week is the hardest week of all. I for, I forget. It's all blurry now, but um yeah, everything Alex said, copy paste to me. Um, but to be more specific, like I played with Lucas until eleven fifty nine AM and then I would log in and commit myself to staring at my computer, being as present as humanly possible. Um, but then also offering myself the grace to go and deal with whatever I had to, cause my baby is my priority. Um, so I think the thing that I would add is like, part of my day was going to tutoring because I, you know, wasn't picking up concepts maybe as quickly as I would have if I was able to study outside of those 11 hours, but I didn't, I didn't, I could have made that time, I guess, but I just didn't because I prioritized the sleep and hanging out with baby. Um, so if you, there's tests every week and if you don't pass a test, you take an APC. I actually can't remember what those letters stand for, but, um, you it's tutoring. So you get one-on-one -on -one support and I had to go to that basically every week. <laughs> so uh, a lot of my time was spent in APC, which was awesome because now I'm getting one-on-one -on -one help. Like there is, I feel no negative negativity about not doing well in these tests. Cause I was like, yes, now I get to talk to that guy and that guy's going to help me. Um, and it was awesome. So I'll say that that was also part of my schedule. Um, and that would happen during lunch or, or whatever. Um, and if it happens to you, like good for you, like that's awesome because it's, it's an opportunity to get some one-on-one -on -one help. Um, and then I'll, I'll just add the one thing that Alex probably didn't have to do. Um, I was breastfeeding when I was in the immersive. And so, um, you know, during the program, if I needed to breastfeed, I would just message the instructor, like, Hey, I'm going to turn my camera off. I'm feeding Lucas. They'd be like, you go girl. I would turn my camera off and I would just feed him and I would listen to the lecture. Um, or I remember once I was, I was, uh, pair programming with two guys and they could hear, they heard the like, whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. And they're like, what's that noise? I was like, oh, it's my pump. <laughs> so they had no idea. Um, but you know, whatever, everybody was like totally cool about it. And, um, like every, every time I needed to do something in the middle of the day, like they were like, yes, go and do that. That's awesome. You go take care of your baby. Um, so yeah, that's that. Well, oh, and that's such a great segue to our next question. Sam, I promise I'll get to you on a day in the life. Uh, but Samantha, so you talked about, first of all, APCs. If any of you come to Petrie, man, will I give you my philosophy on the assessments and APCs. I have a long spiel about it. So come and you'll hear it. Uh, but you talked about, Samantha, giving yourself grace and um, how there was definite overlap between your care for Lucas and the program itself. So can you unpack that a little bit more and talk a little bit about the support or the support you felt during the immersive as you were trying to care for him? Yeah. I mean, tell me if I'm not answering your question, but I, I just felt like every time I needed something and I asked for it, I got it. You know, if I needed, you know, he had to go to his, nine month or eight months, some, some appointment, you know, when they're babies, they go all the time for, to the doctor and it was fine. They were like, go and take that hour. You can make up the, you know, hack out the thing that we do in the morning is called hack hour. They were like, you can make that up later. Totally fine. So every time I asked for something, they met me with what I needed and more. And I often didn't take more because I didn't want to. Um, I wanted to only take what I needed. Um, but if I needed more than there, it was there. So like, I felt, I felt incredibly supported by the instruct, the instructors, of course. And then my cohort, everybody there, they love Lucas. They, they still ask him, ask about him. You know, that's their like little boyfriend. They, so I feel like everybody, everybody's just, it, it's like a people first organization. It felt to me. And so I was, I was very glad to know that I was, you know, me being a mother wasn't, it wasn't bringing anybody down and it wasn't bringing me down. Um, and, you know, I, I had mentioned this earlier or some other time um, that if I had done this program when I was younger, I would have given it the same gusto that I gave to teaching. I would have been 150 percent, you know, working 15 hours a day because that's who I was then. Um, but that's just not who I am now. I have different priorities and and that's fine. Like, uh you know, I just went into it thinking I'm going to learn as much as I can. And I'm, 
I'm just going to, I'm just going to do the best that I can and not feel sorry for the things that I can't do. And, um, and, and that all, that all worked out for me. And yeah, I, I never felt, I don't, yeah, it's hard to explain, but I never felt that I had to apologize for, for what I had going on in my life. And, and I, I just, I feel very grateful that I was able to do this and be a mom. Like, wow, like that's awesome. And so I never felt, never felt like I was um, holding myself back or anything. And it, please correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounds like even though you did take your foot off the gas a little bit, it was still a successful journey. And you absolutely, you yeah. So like, I, I got so much help along the way. My, so the project that you do at the end is with a group and you get to be like best, best buds with those people. And like those, those girls that I worked with are top notch engineers and they taught me so many things. Um, and it was just such a beautiful thing to be able to learn from them. And then during the APCs, I got to learn from everybody. Um, there's this one thing called a grad assessment that if you don't pass it, they like, apparently if you don't pass it, you don't get to graduate Codesmith, but there's never been a person that didn't pass in all of time. Um, but you might not pass on the first time. So I didn't pass on the first time, but that meant that I got to have like four APCs with this genius who taught me everything about the internet. It was remarkable. Like, so then I went into my, I took the grad assessment again and I finished it like an hour early because I was super brains because I had worked so hard with this guy. And like, I, I felt so lucky that I had this chance to like deep learn something rather than, cause we learned so quickly in Codesmith. It's like, bang, 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 next thing, next thing, next thing. You don't get a ton of time to process, but I felt like I had that with the APCs. And so I felt super lucky. I felt, felt super lucky with it all. Yeah, the goal is for you all to get jobs and we want you to have the knowledge you need to do that. So it's not punitive. We're just filling knowledge gaps. That's what that's a sliver of my philosophy behind the APCs and assessments. Uh, Sam, thank you. You've been waiting so patiently. So our part timer, talk to us about a day in the life. What was a typical day in uh, in Coatsmith for you? And how did that work with balancing, um, you know, the duties of motherhood? So mine definitely looked different um, than Alex and Samantha's because they were in the full-time program and I was obviously not. Um, so during the day I was with my kids. Um, my daughter actually started kindergarten when I started the immersive. So we sort of went back, to, we went to school together. Um, but before that, I was home with all three of them. Um, in the program, I was home during the day with just the two, my two youngest. Um and so my day kind of looked like any normal day. Like I had all day, I was home with them. Um, they take like a two hour ish, like nap time, rest time in the middle of the day. So like during that time I would use for things like hack hours or to schedule APCs. I also had APCs every time. Um, and I liked having that time to go through it with someone because uh, like Samantha said, like I didn't have as much time outside of class to devote to practice or study or review. Um, so I do feel like I was a little bit behind some of the other people, but not like so far behind that I, you know, couldn't do it. Um, it just took me a little longer, I think. Um, but so no, during the day, it was pretty much like a normal day. And then uh, my kids go to bed at seven. So we did, you know, dinner, bedtime, all that kind of stuff. And then class starts at eight or started at eight. Um, and my daughter still, uh, makes, you know, appearances and she would do that during the immersive as well. Um, and it was fine. Like she, you know, my group mates knew her name and they would ask her about school or she would show them some weird things she made out of clay. Um, and she was very proud of it. And I was always like, okay, go. And they were like, no, no, we have more questions. Like everybody was super kind and, um, you know, will, like no one ever made me feel bad about that. Um, but so my days kind of looked similar, but at night they were mostly asleep. Yeah. I still think about, uh, Nestor. Nestor was another resident in the program. His son would always ask you what you had for dinner, like every night, like that was his MO. Um, and do you, Sam, do you feel like that? support that you had is sort of ingrained in the program or were there other support systems that Coatsmith provided you to get through this with a child? I mean, I think it was definitely really helpful. Like, so my biggest 
one of my fears coming in was that I was going to be the oldest and the only mom and the only person that like had new, like no tech background um, and something else that I can't remember, but none of those things were true. There was another mom in my cohort with me. Um, I was not the oldest person. Like it was, none of my fears were true, like happened. Um, I think I, I like, I almost feel like I could have asked for more support. Like I tried not to, I tried to be like, no, no, no. Like I can't be, you know, like I tried to sort of separate them. Um, I feel like I could have been like, Hey, someone's sick. Like I need whatever. And I feel like it would have happened. I didn't do that, but all my groups were very like, I'm going to go do bedtime or somebody needs water. Um, so that was really helpful. You off the top of your head, do you know who was the oldest person in your cohort? I think Jason Br uh, Br uh, Brown. Jason Brown. Brown. Okay. Yeah. yeah that, makes, I, that makes sense. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, he was probably mid to late forties, right? I is, think so. He's still around y'all. He's not, <laughs> he, he is mid to late forties. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Thanks. Um, Alex. So uh, support, D what were some of the support, what support systems did Coatsman have in place? for you or what helped you get through the, the program with the, while taking care of your daughter? Yeah, I had sort of two um, two major interactions with that. The first one is the more dramatic one. I started with weekly 52 cohort. And then five days in, my wife, um, who had some um, immune stuff at the time, and daughter, who was two at the time, both tested positive for COVID. So um, that was pretty like pretty stressful and pretty scary. And not only, <laughs> mainly because of the health of my family, but also because I had already paid $20,000 to do this thing. And it was like, what's going to happen in the next 10 days? Who knows? Um, but uh, the ad administration and the staff at Coatsmith all had lots of very supportive and very on my end tearful meetings with me about um, what to do and how to move forward. And in the end, they ended up uh, giving me some grace and letting me drop and then start up with the next cohort um, in order to be able to stop and take care of my family. So that was like, that was the moment for me when it really was like clear, you know, CSX is a cool place. You can see it some in the hard parts lectures, all that stuff. And there's a ton of talk about the community at Codesmith and it all, it, you know, but I'm, I'm a natural skeptic. So I went into it with a fair amount of like, okay, yeah, all right, sure, 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 sure. And then I, I came back in week 353, like waving a flag and shouting at everyone about how amazing Codesmith was. So it was um, really proved to me uh, that it's not a bunch of talk. Uh, and then it, that sort of vibe continued all the way through. Like there is inevitably, especially in the full-time program, I imagine in the part-time program too, everybody at some point has burnout, has imposter syndrome, you know, feels like they can't do it anymore. feels like they shouldn't be there anymore or whatever. And there are just constant check-ins and moments to reflect and talk to somebody like without pressure of learning or sounding smart or you know and and allowing yourself to have vulnerable moments all the way through and that is uh i mean you know without oversharing i had an absolute meltdown right at the beginning like that the first week of the big project when you're supposed to ideate uh i absolutely just like crumbled into a puddle on the floor and it was like very sad and stressful and um you know at, Everybody was there to help pick me up. My cohort, instructors, everybody. So it it was. It really is. The community is the biggest support program, and it it really is all it's cracked up to be. Oh, that's so encouraging to hear because we talk about it a lot in Petri. It's it's the community that helps you get through nine months of this, and it's so encouraging to hear it's the same story in the full time programs because it really is true. It's just challenging material at all. And uh, you're put in a lot of situations that are very stressful and it's the community, it's the knowledge sharing, it's the support, uh, which I think is why so many of our residents end up so successful afterwards. Okay, so I think we'll do one more question and then turn it over to a Q&A. Um, so let's start with Sam this time. Uh, what advice would you give or what resources and or what resources would you recommend to parents who are interested in pursuing a career in tech? 
Um, so I think my advice is lower your expectations of what you can do uh, during the program. I am a recovering perfectionist, uh, very type A, very like have to do everything exactly right. And I don't want help because someone else might not do it exactly right. Um, and I had to let go of a lot of that. <laughs> um, that's probably just good life advice, but I, you know, just, I went into it going, well, this is, everything's going to happen exact time and it's going to be fine. And, you know, the kids are going to nap exactly the time I need them to, so I can practice and that didn't happen. Um, maybe ever. Um, so just mostly lowering your expectations, um, resources. I don't, I mean, I think Codesmith is pretty great. Like there are so many resources that are here, like CSX, the CSX Slack, the intro workshop, like CS prep, like everything is here for you to do it. You just have to, I think like sort of sort everything outside of Codesmith so that you can do Codesmith stuff, if that makes sense. Like figure out how the rest of your life is going to run so that you can focus on doing it while you're in like the class hours, I think. Yeah, great stuff. Alex. Yeah, going off of what Sam said, um, Dino Nugs and Bluey uh, came in very handy. Both of those things were uh, excellent to have around. Um, uh, and then, you know, uh, I, my advice in terms of, um, it, it, for anyone who's interested in pursuing a career in tech, uh, not just parents is is just like Sam said too. I never did anything other than Codesmith stuff until I was in Codesmith. I mean, you know, since then I've done some Udemy courses and I've like looked at the Odin project and things like that. But the the what Codesmith offers is such a complete system from start to finish that I I, I still think CSX is my favorite place to work algorithms. Uh, uh, you know, on the internet. So uh, uh, I think really trusting the process um, and just following the path in front of you and not like beating yourself up about not getting through it as fast as you want, uh, but rather just like putting one foot in front of the other and just getting through it is um, is the way to go. Yeah. And then, you know, uh, I bought an iPad for the program and I didn't touch it a single time during the program, but I wouldn't have gotten through the program without that iPad around. So. <laughs> I dig it. Yeah, putting one foot in front of the other is, I think, exactly the, the way to get through the program, especially when you're knee deep in it. So awesome stuff. Uh, Samantha. Yeah. Um, I I feel like maybe sometimes people were like, oh, wow, that's tough. She has a kid. That's really, that must be really hard. And, you know, I I'd spin it back and I'm like, I have something that so many people want. Like I have a family and I've got this little guy that looks up to me and he loves me. And oh my God, like I am so full of a love that I could never understand outside of being a mother. And I get to change my career and I get to be like crazy smart in three months. Like this is awesome. So like just, you know, n not thinking about you could compare and be like, oh, if I had done this before kids, blah, 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 like whatever you have a kid and it's awesome. And that's so cool. Like that's the coolest thing in the world to me. So like, I just felt like so grateful that I was able to do it and be able to like show him, even though he was a like, teeny tiny baby, like, but for him to grow up knowing that you know, my mom did something really, really cool and she's super smart and look at that. Like, I don't know. I just think it's super, I think it's super cool. So like, I would, I would suggest to like, keep that in the back of your minds that like, you have a special opportunity in front of you. Um, I felt like I was going to say something else, but I don't know. Uh, in terms of like resources, I've got nothing. Um, all I did was Codesmith. Um, and like a few things on Code Academy cause I accidentally bought it. Um, and that was it. So and I have a job. So don't feel like you need to go out there and like crush everything on the internet. Uh, you could, you could learn everything you need to learn, uh, through Codesmith and don't get me wrong. Like I'm Googling all day and I'm like cutting it up on the Google, like just trying to figure out what each thing means, but 
you know, I have, I have the base knowledge of everything I need. So don't feel like you need to go out and f- buy things and do all this stuff. Like you, you have everything you need right there in your fingertips. Um, I, I think that's my advice. Yeah. It's just like, go into this knowing that you've got this awesome life that people want people like so many people want children and maybe don't have them. And you've got this, this beautiful family waiting for you when you're, when you're closing your computer. Yeah. And there's a couple of things that are really amazing to talk about there first, like, yes, you're Googling away because we all talk about the knowledge that you gain from Codesmith, but that's really not the, the core nugget. Codesmith teaches you how to solve problems, meaning if you don't have the knowledge, you can figure it out. My first job out of Codesmith was in Python, and Codesmith does not teach Python at all, but you can figure it out because of the problem-solving mentality that's sort of ingrained in you as you go. You figure out how to Google, where to Google, how to experiment, and how to understand things that you've never encountered before, which I think is really great. And then the other thing that I'll touch on that you said, which, yes, you have this awesome experience having gotten through Codesmith, but then coming out the other side, the life that you get to provide your children. My son is going to grow up having access to things, opportunities that I never had as a child. And that I think is so powerful. The life this industry provides you, it, it, uh, I mean, I don't need to go too far into my background, but I didn't, I grew up eating spaghetti every night, y'all. And it, it was, it was tough at times. And you know, God willing, everything stays on track. My son will never have to know that kind of life. And I think that is an amazing thing that Codesmith enables for everyone who comes through it. Uh, so with that, I guess we can turn it over to uh, some, some Q&A. Uh, Santa Collins, there was one question in the chat from way early on. Let's see if we can scroll back up and see it. And it was uh, Rojay. So it was asking if uh, a lot of folks come through that are changing careers or learning to code sort of in a different segment of their life, thinking 40s, 50s, and the answer is yes. We do have uh, quite a few people like that come through. Uh, I'd say the majority of our residents are probably, well, for Petrie, we get a different kind of people, right? We get folks who are more, um, folks who can't put their lives on pause, meaning they are they have careers, they have families, they have, they're caretaking for other people. So they're at a different stage in life already. Um, so I'd say the majority of our students are probably, and Sam, you've seen a few cohorts now, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I'd say between 25 and 35 are the majority, but then there are folks who come in 40s. I'm, I'm 40. So uh, I went through in my late 30s. Uh, there are folks who are 40, and I think I've even seen 50s um, folks coming through too. And uh, as far as I know, those folks meet with success. I know Jason Brown recently graduated, so he's still job hunting, but I've seen other folks come through at that age and, and land jobs because Eric Kirsten was just talking about this last night, in fact. Eric Kirsten is a brilliant human being. He has founded and sold two companies in his life. He's been in tech for 20, 25 years, so he knows the industry inside now. And he was talking last night about how if you're good, you're good. I know ageism is um, something that a lot of folks think the tech industry suffers from, but the reality is if you're a good engineer, there are companies that want you because there are not a good, enough good engineers out there to solve, to solve what companies need when it comes to tech. There is a forecasted 80 million developer deficiency over I think the next 15 years. So 80 million empty seats for developers over the next 15 years. So if you're good at what you do, I don't think you're going to have any problem finding a job. And if you make it through Codesmith, you're you're better than most at what you do, I think, my opinion. So sorry, Sam, I don't, Samantha, I don't know if you want to take over, if there are more questions you want to go through in the chat or, or what. No, yeah, I think we have uh, a couple questions here. Um, let's see, scroll up here. Mark asked, how long did it take you to get through CSX? Um, so for each each of our panelists, maybe you guys can touch on um, your timeline. Um, I did CSX, I think for like two months, maybe. That was I hit it pretty hard, pretty hard for somebody who like, wasn't stopping everything else. So I mean, I was on it like 
a couple hours, maybe three hours a day um, for that time. And um, that was starting from zero. So, I mean, I, I, and also without, you know, a really, a very good brain. So um, if you have a good brain, you could probably do it a lot faster. Um, and I did um, JavaScript for beginners and CS prep. Um, I thought they were both great. And it, you know, I was already pretty like committed to doing the immersive at that point anyway. So it sort of doesn't, at that point it's included in the cost of the immersive. So you might as well just do the prep programs. Um, there are good, good practice and things like that, even if the concepts aren't new. So. Yeah, and sorry, Alex, I, I missed this. Did you, the prep programs, did you mention if there are uh, prep programs that cost dollars, but if you want to do the immersive, those dollars roll into the, into the tuition for the immersive. So if you know the immersive is what you want, for me, the prep programs are almost a no brainer because they're essentially free. Sorry, Samantha, you were about to say things and then I stomped all over you. There is no stomping, don't worry. Uh, yeah, I think I came in with a little a little knowledge because I had been I'm doing some like Python studying on my own. Um, but I think it took me month, month and a half to get through CSX. But I was also like incredibly committed because I was like, I need to get into this cohort. It's happening. Um, and so I think about a month or a month and a half. And I, I didn't have time to go through CS prep or the other one, um, but I was fine. So I, you know, day one, I was worried that I was going to be the chump that didn't know that thing that they learned in CS prep, but it's covered in CSX. You'll be okay if you don't have the time or you're not able to make that happen. And I think it took me maybe like two or three-ish months to go through CSX. I did not do it every single night. Uh, getting into the routine took me a little bit, but I, I did do CS prep. I feel like that was in May and I started in like February ish i don't know i'm terrible uh, so two three ish months that's a very rough get estimate guesstimate i don't know but i didn't do javascript for beginners i just did cs prep awesome thank you all for sharing um i think most of our other questions sort of got touched on there um i think with a few minutes left here um this may be our last question but we'll see if we can fit in another if one comes across um, but long term, um, I not in the first couple of years, uh, and I think uh, this might be really good for Alex and Samantha, um, as you two are both working in the industry right now. Do you think software is a career that you that would allow for a part time or contract basis of work? I can't do much forecasting for the future, um, but I like still get hit up on LinkedIn for contract work because. I don't know. I mean, I don't know why they keep hitting me up, but they're like, Hey, do you want to do this for three months? I'm like, no, I don't like go somewhere else, please. Um, so I think definitely that's, that's definitely something. And at my company, we've used contractors to bang out certain things that need to get done. Um, and so definitely at SMP, we use them. Um, and then for part-time, I definitely think that if you're going into the career with the hope of getting part-time, it might be more challenging, but I get the impression that, you know, a few years down the road at SMP where I'm at, like if I make myself invaluable in my team and I say, I'm only going to work 20 hours a week, I think that's better than zero. So I'm pretty sure that, you know, once, if you can make yourself, make a name for yourself in your, in your job and with your company, you can, you can kind of tell them what you're going to do. Um, I know that sounds really silly and maybe a little, a little too cocky, but I, you know, I think if you're good and you make a good impression on your team, then um, I could imagine my team saying like, yeah, sure. If you need to be part-time for a few, a few years while you take care of your babies, that's fine. I think that would be fine. Yeah. I think the flexibility, like there's just a lot of negotiation and flexibility. So, you know, I think that Samantha's instinct is right there. And there's a, I've been following a thread on the alumni Slack, uh, specifically about part-time work. Um, and it seems like there are some specific resources for people that are looking for part-time work. I, there's a ton of people that do contract work. I mean, that's that's like definitely people people work their way through with contract work uh, for sure. But if you're looking for something that's like more permanent, but part-time, 
I think there are resources out there. I don't know that they're as common, but I'm sure that, you know, they're, they're there. So, yeah, thank you to our wonderful panelists um, for being here and for answering all these questions and diving into your experiences and your journey. Um, we loved hearing from you, Matt. Thank you for moderating and for keeping the conversation going. Um, and to our audience, thank you for being here and for asking your questions and keeping that chat going. Um, we loved having you here and hope to see you all at future workshops and future panels um, and maybe even one day in the immersive as well. Um, so yeah, I think with that, we'll close things out here. Um, definitely for future reference, keep an eye on our event page on our website. Um, we're always adding new things there. We've got some um, exciting workshops coming up and our, our regular workshops that we do each week. Um, but you never know when a panel like this will, will pop up on there. So definitely keep your eye there um, and join CSX Slack um, if you're not already on there to meet other members of the community, um, you know, get to know some people who are in similar shoes as you. We do have a new uh, CSX parents channel. Um, so if you are a parent and you're looking for other parents who are, um, you know, going through CSX and who are interested in the immersive um, and you want to chat or ask questions, great place to do so. Um, but yeah, have a wonderful evening, morning, whatever time it is where you are. Um, and we'll, we'll see you at some future events and workshops. Thanks everyone. Bye.